Hi, in this video um, I'm going to show you guys how to do cross-referencing um, in Pantone.com. So selecting a color out of Photoshop um, and finding out what it is and then taking it over to the Pantone website and getting the TCX number for it. So this video will walk you through that process a little um, as you begin your mood and trend board. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up Photoshop and I already have a 14 by 17 document. Um, as you can see, I'm going to hit V to go to my move tool and if you go to image and then if you go to image size it'll always tell you what the size is so my width is 17 and my height is 14 my resolution is 300 so once you have a document that's a way to find out the size of it if you're not certain what it is just image and then go down to image size um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place let's just say I'm going to grab this image and pull it in here and go ahead and put it up here. Maybe do something like this with it. And hit OK. And then Command T. Maybe I don't want it quite that large. Maybe I'll do something like this with it. Hit OK. And then I might want to pull in this image as well. Maybe something like these lines that I'm just sewing some images in to work with right now um, and hit OK and then what else might there be um, you know maybe I want to take this image again and duplicate it which is command J and so as you can see over here that has duplicated the layer um, now it's on top of it and so what I can maybe do is take this image and then hit Command T, and then you can come up here to Edit and Transform, and you can do a couple of things. You can flip it horizontal, and it goes the other direction like this. So you can play around with the direction that it's coming in. Um, let's go back. Command Alt Z. Let me do this, and then Command Z. Also Command T, and go to Edit, Transform, and flip vertical. And see if that's something that you might want to play around with as well. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can flip images if you would like. I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to do something like this. Um, Command T, move this one a little larger, hold the shift key, maybe something like that down here. And so I'm just going to set some images in. And the reason I've done this is like now I'm trying to come up with a color story. And maybe what I might want to do, and as we know, all three of these are on different layers. Um, I'm going to hit V, which is going to be back to my move tool. And maybe I want to sample a color out of these now and start a color story based off of this. So maybe what I'm going to do is if I hit my V tool, or if you go over here and grab your eyedropper tool, one of the two, eyedropper, if I'm going to click on some of that green, you'll notice over here that this is a green that it chose. So however you want to do it, you can use eyedropper and the shortcut for that is the letter I. Or you can, if you're in your brush tool already, um, what you can do is um, hit the Alt key and it'll sample as well as a shortcut. So, oh, that's a lovely pink. Maybe I'll go ahead and use that one. But if you notice one of my brush tool, look what's happening here. Um, please remember that's because my layer is not rasterized. So you can right click on it or Two finger click on a Mac and pull this up, rasterize layer. If you don't have a Mac, you can come up here and go to layer and you'll find um, rasterize right here. So that's kind of up to you. There are several ways to get to it, but what that allows you to do, remember it brings it in as a smart object and then that means it's somewhat protected. We can make it larger or smaller, but we can't do really any pixel manipulation or anything like that while it's a smart object. So I've rasterized the layer, which will allow me to do that. And so the same thing here, I'm gonna rasterize this one, and then I'm gonna rasterize this one. So if I want to do something now, my brush, you can see my brush tool right here, floating around as I move my mouse around. Um, so I'm gonna go back down to this one, and then, like I said, you can either use the eyedropper tool, which I'll hit I, and it'll take me back to that. And let me choose a nice green. And then on this one, remember if you double or if you click on this, um, what I can do, number one, is add it to my swatches. So I'll have it um, green, green, and green, green. How about green, green? There, 
Now, how about we do that again? <laughs> okay, and so we have this, and you'll see that it'll go into my swatches, and my swatches are here, and there it is, and these are the recent ones I've used, and if we scroll this down a little, you'll see there it is, right there. If you hover for a little bit, it should pop up the name, but oh well, we don't have to worry about that right now. And we'll come back over here, and now the next thing I do, maybe I want to sample this, same thing, this really nice dusty pink, add it to my swatches, dust pink, okay, once again if you click on the swatches tab, there it is. And so then what I would do is go through and try to do at least, do maybe five to no more than nine colors for your color story. So then let's say I go back here, I'm going to do this really deep, I'm going to do this one. Um, get my way around, it's too dark. Okay, we'll do this one. So once again, I'm going to add it to my swatches. Um, lav, and say okay, and then, and so on and so on. So let me grab one here and add that to my swatches. And I'm just going to do this, okay. And you can see right here, they're, they're coming um, here at the bottom. So we started with the green, so I've got four. Let me go over here and get like a really nice, almost white pale, okay. And go back to color, there it is. Um, add to swatches, okay. And let me cancel all that now. So now if I go back to my swatches, I can see this. So let's go back to this first one. I'm gonna click on it, go to color, and then color libraries. And as you can see, this is a solid coated, Pantone solid coated. And the number is 5773C. So what I'm going to do is 5773C, go to Safari, and I've opened up Pantone. And what I'm going to do is if you click on this menu right here, we need to um, cross-reference this to, like I said, to a fashion color with the prefix of a TCX. Right now we're using a solid coded coming out of Photoshop. So if you click on this menu and you come over here, you find color cross-reference. So right under customer service click on that and this pops up so the first thing we're going to do is click on the guide and we know that we used a solid coded how do we know that remember go back to your Photoshop it tells us right here that's what it is it's a solid coded so now back to our Pantone next thing I should have looked while I was over here let me pull this down again um, 5773C. So the next one I'm going to do color. Go up here to the top right, hit search, and type in 5773C. And it's going to find that color, and there it is. So I hit that, and there it is. Now I go to the reference, and now what I'm going to do is ask it to give me the closest that it can to this in my TCX number. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and you're going to see Fashion, Home, and Interiors. Um, this is cotton. Let's do this one. And what it's given us is the TCX number. Um, so what we can do is take this and hit OK. And let's say over here, maybe I wanted to start doing my um, color story on this page. So what I'm going to do is add another layer. Um, go over here and grab my elliptical marquee. Since we have donuts, maybe I'll make circles. And so I'll hold the Alt key and the Shift and draw from the center. And we've done this before and you know how to do this. Edit, fill. I'm going to fill it with the foreground color. And the reason I'm choosing foreground because it's this color here. Hit OK. And then deselect. And then I can do this for each of my swatches. So let me come back over here, grab this one, go back here, duplicate the layer, hit V, hit, put it right on top of it, and then hit this, go over here, grab your magic wand, select it, and then make sure the swatch is selected here in my color, which it is and then hit File, 
or I'm sorry, edit, fill, and foreground color. And this is one of the very first things we did in this class, remember? Um, and so back to V. This time I'm just going to Alt drag. Remember, you can Command J if you just duplicate the layer as well. Every time I do this, it makes a new layer. Go back to my swatches. And my next color is this one. So it's right up here. I can see that that's it. Grab my magic wand, click on it, edit, fill, foreground color, and deselect, V for the move tool, Alt, drag, or Command J. Come back over here, do this one, and then you'll get the momentum going. And here we go, edit, fill, foreground color, and then we'll do one more. Alt, drag, or hit V first, Alt, drag. And so Photoshop is letting me know that they are all spaced um, the same. So now I'm gonna hit this one with the magic wand, edit, fill, uh, make sure I select this, let me cancel, I got ahead of myself. So I'm gonna select this right here. I know it's the next one I'm using because it went right there in the front. And so now back to edit, fill, and let's do foreground color, yes. So let's say these are now the color stories that I want to use. Um, and remember in one of our very first exercises, I'm going to come down here, click this one, hold the shift key, and click all the way up to the very last one. And what it does is it highlights all of those layers, and so I can move them as one if I would like. So maybe I move them at the bottom, I can hit Command T and rotate them. And then as you start to go towards the top, if you hold the shift key, the computer will straighten it up for you. And the reason I'm able to do this is because they are all grouped over here. I have them all selected at the same time. Um, I'm definitely going to have to be doing some more things to these. Um, but let's say I'm okay with it. I'm not okay with it there though. Let's do this. <laughs> um, I'm going to hold the shift key. Notice how I'm getting close, but as soon as I hold the shift key, watch what, as I am rotating, the computer straightens it up for me. Um, it's pretty awesome. So I'm going to go down here and do this. And so I'm going to hit OK. Now I know that from my Pantone, let me go back here, that the TCX number is 170324. So right here on top, I'm going to go hit my text tool, which is T. You can see that I get a text box. I'm going to click right here, and it makes a layer for me. And then I'm going to hit 17. Where is he? 17 0324. 17-0324 TCX. Um, and now, obviously, this is too big and it's not the color I want. So I'm just going to highlight it, go up here, choose a font color. Just go down here, hit OK, and then also too, I'm going to choose a font size that would fit inside of this, and that one does, so I'm going to hit Escape, and then hit V for the Move tool, and I'm able to move it. And so you're going to do this for every color, and then each color will have its Pantone TCX number inside. All right, so that is how you go and do the cross-references with Pantone and working and pulling colors out of Photoshop to do that. All right.